Hello, I'm Darren. We have breaking news. More than 600,000 Americans have kidney failure. While the number of people with kidney failure is enormous, the number of people with its precursor, chronic kidney disease, is staggering. An estimated 31 million Americans, or about 10% of the US population. Diabetes and hypertension cause two-thirds of all cases of kidney disease. One out of every three Americans is at risk for kidney disease, and kidney disease is now among the top 10 causes of death in the United States. In addition, 9 out of 10 people with early to moderate kidney disease don't know they have it, putting their health in jeopardy. Are you at risk? For more information, contact urbankidneyalliance.org. The life you save may be yours. What's going on? What's going on? Welcome to another episode of the Kidney Cookery. I'm your host, Steve Belch. I was just looking at that intro. That's from your boy, Jared Brown. Thanks for that intro, Jared. Good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing this evening? Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, I'd like to thank the people I saw commenting, Bridget, Sabrina. Hey, Sabrina, I'll be down your way uh, Monday. Monday to Friday, ATL all the way, baby. Uh, I'd like to thank Jonathan, Jared. Uh, guys, thank you for sharing. Again, welcome to the Kidney Cookery. Man, this is going to be a great show tonight. Tonight, we got Chef Brian Bordley on deck. He got something he's going to cook tonight. Um, I'm going to let him share what he has Um Excuse me, what he'll be preparing tonight on the kidney cookery. So sit back, go get a book. No, don't get a book because that's going to distract you. Go get some popcorn. Go get your, your favorite drink. Uh, pull up a chair. Come chop it up with Chef Borley and myself as we get started. Let me give uh, Chef the VIP intro, and we're going to bring him on up. Here we go. Hey, Chef Borley, what's going on? Hey, Steve, how are you today, man? Uh, pretty good. How about yourself, man? Wonderful today. Wonderful day. Thanks for having me. Oh, man, you know, you always here, man. Thanks for stepping in the cookery tonight. Uh, what you got going tonight? Wait a minute. My bad. We found out there's a lot of diabetes patients and renal patients love Chinese food. So we're going to do a variation of a Chinese dish today. Asian noodles, vegetarian, um, just lots of vegetables that are very good for the body. Um, in most cases, when we go through our fast in January, we use a lot of noodles just to add some substance to your diet. But what we found was a sweet potato noodle 
that doesn't raise your glycemic index. So it's very clean for di diabetic patients. You said a sweet potato noodle. Yes, it's a sweet potato noodle. Oh, okay. Okay. It's just me with the starch of the sweet potato. Nothing else is added. Awesome. So right now I've been prepping some of these vegetables. We're going to do some red and yellow, orange, mini sweet peppers, stir fry some onions. I've got some carrots. This is a wonderful device. You see it on TV a lot. And all it does is help you to give a nice slice to your vegetables. Oh, man, how much something like that costs? A set of three of these ran me $20. Oh, that look like something you can get out of the dollar store. I haven't seen it at the dollar store, though. Okay. So we got some snap peas. I'm going to put some bok choy in it, which is, a, which is one of the greatest vegetables for diabetics. What is that called? Bok choy. Oh, okay, bok choy, okay. And where can you get and that? Then on the back end, we're going to add some power greens to it. Mm hmm All right. So if you're ready, first we're going to heat up some water. We're going to get it to boil. We're going to add some salt to it. Now I'm adding pink salt to the water just to give the noodles a little bit of flavor. Now, how we're much pink salt you add? Huh? How much salt are you adding? Two tablespoons of pink salt. And we're going to end up rinsing that off anyway. But what the salt does is it's going to help flavor the noodles and lock in the nutrition inside the green vegetables so we don't lose their color. Okay, got you. I was trying to get some of this done, but I figured let me just wait. And I can show you how we do a couple different things. So, bok choy tends to be a real dirty vegetable, especially in between the base of them. So we cut the bottoms off, and we're just going to rinse them off and really scrub them. All this grit and dirt is in the base of them. And then you can break the leaves apart once you rinse them very well. Always rinse vegetables in cold water. Okay. Why cold? Because you don't want to start the cooking process. Got you. Got you. So on the back end, once they steam and become tender, we hit them with cold water on the back end to stop the cooking process. Got you. And I wanted to thank my wonderful assistant today for her help. Doing yeah, such thank a you, my Asia. So we're trying to get this water to boil. All I've added to it was some sesame seed oil, which is right here. Some black sesame seed oil. Now, black sesame seed oil is one of the four oils every renal patient should cook food with. Really? Yes. The first one is coconut oil, walnut oil, avocado, and sesame. But the coconut is a healer. Wow. Why they don't um, talk about that in the dialysis unit? Because dialysis individuals don't have alternative don't have alternative treatments or even understanding. So this knowledge of alternative medicine isn't trained in technical tradition. So I apologize. I'm looking at my food and trying to look at it both ways. Okay. So now, once this water gets hot, we're going to do the noodles. The one, the wonderful thing about Asian noodles, they cook very fast, not like Italian pasta. 
So all I'm going to do is put them in for three minutes. But I'm going to add my green vegetables in as well. So that way they can tenderize while we are cooking both of them. Then okay, I'll rinse got them, you. shock them with cold water. And then we'll start stir frying after that. Okay. Okay. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. I was going to add meat for you, but since you're not coming, we're going to do vegetarian. All right. I mean, I don't eat a lot of meat, and I'm, I'm backing off. <laughs> so you can add a couple different variations of meat. You can add some chicken. Take a rotisserie, a rotisserie chicken that you might get from Sam's. Pull the meat off. You don't need the skin, and you can stir fry that up. You can do some beef. You can even do a little bit of lamb, but try to stay as clean as possible. And we even do fish sometimes and put it in a stir fry like salmon. Oh, man. that's oh, the Fish sounds good. Maybe some salmon. Yes. So next time we'll do some more fish dishes. I did go fishing and catch a nice fish. So we can cook that up next time. Oh, okay. I saw that picture on your on, – well, that was an old picture, some fish that you caught. Right. Let's see. Oh, where can uh, someone find black sesame seed oil at? Asian supermarkets. In Baltimore, we've got three on the west side. Normally, they're H&H, &H, but you want to look for black sesame seed oil. And the other great thing about this, we use oil like a toothpaste. So we'll blend baking soda, sesame seed oil, and some coconut oil. Apply it to your mouth, swish it around. It will help to break down any plaque and tartar and also clean your breath. Wait a minute. You it's said sesame seed oil, baking, baking soda, soda, and coconut oil. I'm going to try that. <laughs> yes. It's called oil pulling. And what we found out is the easiest way to keep tartar and plaque off of your teeth and keeps your breath fresh. Sesame oil tastes a little nutty. Okay, okay. And that's a good tip to know. So we got a lot of tips. I'm going to try to give you more as we go along in this cooking demo. Um, while I've got you here, let me help with this. These are called boros, Thailand bananas. Why are these so small? And they have small seeds inside of them, which means they're great for the body. We don't get big bananas from regular supermarkets. They are hybrids, GMOs, and genetic. So we, I mean, um, GMOs. So we don't get those. But don't sure bananas. But don't bananas have uh, potassium in it? Yes, but you don't want a hybrid banana. You want boros. Okay. Potassium is, I mean, one of the things that works well for bananas is it helps lower blood pressure. But you got to buy the right banana. Wow. Okay. Okay. Just going to cut this end off. That was bothering. Oh, so Miss Gloria said you got to oil pull for at least 10 minutes. The sesame seed oil, coconut, and baking soda. Yes. I mean, you can use a toothbrush to brush your teeth, brush your tongue. A lot of us don't understand why brushing your tongue is so important. It helps get rid of all that overnight bacteria. So I'm taking a, about a pound of pasta and just putting it in this water. And as the temperature rises, it's, it's going to get soft and tenderized. Is that a wok? Yes, this is a stainless steel wok that a friend of mine gave me from his restaurant. Oh, man. It's nice to have friends, right, Steve? 
Yeah, absolutely. So what about somebody watching, they want to make it and they don't have that? How much do they normally cost? A normal wok, well, now they don't really do a lot of stainless steel woks. They're hard to find. Um, a lot of them now are non-stick because a lot of people don't know how to season a wok or even um, cast iron pans anymore. So then I'm gonna get the vegetables in. Shredded up carrots. Share this video, guys. Uh, thank you for coming into the kidney cookery. We got Chef Brian Borley on deck cooking um, sweet potato noodles. Absolutely. Share this. Share this. You're not going to get this anywhere else online right now. So share. We cooking kidney friendly meals right here on the kidney cookery. Oh, so you mix them in with the noodles. Correct. You let the noodles sit for a couple minutes. Then you add the vegetables. My leafy green vegetables with the salted water are going to get tenderized. Some people like their vegetables crunchy. My guest wants theirs very tender. But the noodles cook fast. And so how will you know when it's ready? I'm going to pull the noodle out. I'm gonna... It should come by itself. shouldn't stick. And it should be real easy and pliable. Not really hard, very soft. My vegetables, they're going to get nice and bright and green. And we're going to end up cooking this twice. So whatever doesn't get cooked will get cooked on a second run. So they're almost done. Oh, man, that's, even, that's looking good. <laughs> As I see you pulling it up. <laughs> yes, this could have been a soup with some chicken broth or some vegetable broth. This could have been a soup. And we make faux soup as well, which is a Vietnamese um, soup with a little bit of meat, lots of vegetables. Yeah. And, and Miss Gloria, you're right. Man, you are so right, Miss Gloria, about the cast iron iron with the uh, iron in the body. It definitely helps. Yes. Same thing with stainless steel when we're cooking. Both of these tend to add minerals to the body, natural minerals that the body wants. All right. Thank you for watching, Courtney, and congratulations on your recent engagement. Congratulations. Oh, uh, Brian, do you know do you know how much uh, potassium phosphorus is in the noodle uh, or in the sweet potato noodles? It's not a lot of potassium or phosphorus. What I found out is when I stayed on rice noodles constantly do my fast in January to February, I was able to shift my phosphorus numbers from a high six down to a low four point three just eating a lot of vegetables in these noodles. So the three noodles we eat are rice noodles, sweet potato noodles, and buckwheat is the third one. Those three Asian noodles do some amazing things in the body and they allow you to feel full and, and clean. You're not heavy, you don't get itis, you don't fall asleep in five minutes, and we're done. <laughs> Right, <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, I know I'm gonna fall in the sleep in five minutes. Oh man! So you get ready to go on the second round of cooking? Yeah, we're about to do the second round. But first, we gotta stop the cooking process. So that means cold water. Okay. So the reason we didn't put the peppers and the onions inside of this dish 
is because we can stir fry them to get done very fast. Uh huh. And they'll they'll get real tender quicker than these green vegetables. And I'll go over spices in a few. It's nothing hard. And even if you had some duck sauce and some soy sauce from a, your last Chinese visit, you could have used that as well. But don't Chinese food have a lot of sodium in it? Yes. But what we're doing is we're using a low sodium soy sauce to make this dish come together easier. All I've done today is add a little bit of sesame oil to the pan. Okay. I'm getting directions from my assistant. So that's what we're doing. Okay. Now we, so because onions cook faster, I mean, because garlic cooks faster than onions, we're going to saute the onions first and the peppers. Then we're going to hit it with a little garlic on the back. So that's the prep from all of this stuff. Okay, so that's the onions. So this is a plastic cutting board that you can get from the dollar store. Cutting board doesn't have to be elaborate anymore. Right now, all I'm doing is just stir frying, caramelizing my peppers and my onions. And once they get a little caramelized into them, which means they're going to break down and wilt a little bit, your onions will get a little brown on them. Then I'll start adding flavoring to the first part of this layer. We layer it and flavor it. We flavor it and layer it. Guys, share this video. Share this broadcast. You're not going to get this anywhere else tonight. The Kidney Cookery right here on Urban Health Outreach Media. We have Chef Brian Borley on deck cooking. So, as my assistant has noted, the smell of just vegetables being stir-fried is amazing. Even without any vegetables, the sesame seed oil gives a nice little nutty flavor. Oh, I know. Hey, you want to have me uh, get in my car and come down 295 or 95 and hop on 695 and find you. <laughs> so I'm adding some garlic, about a teaspoon, tablespoon of garlic. Now that we've caramelized, we're going to drop that in like that, give it a little bam. Now I'm going to add a little bit of soy sauce to this real quick. I'm going to throw a little bit more oil on it so it doesn't stick when we hit the noodles in it. Oh, Miss Gloria said, what about coiled vermicelli pasta? It's super, super thin. Yes, but see, that's still a, that's a, a wheat starch pasta. I just put a little small teaspoon of soy sauce, a little sodium in. Okay. So vermicelli is actually what this came from, the idea of it. But it's made from, dur I mean, during wheat. And that starch raises your blood sugar. All oh, right, man, that looks good. Right that's All right, that's good. Yeah, uh, I've drained my vegetables. I'm about to go into the pan. Then we're going to hit it with flavor and season. All right. I've got my garlic in so far. And while she's cooking, we're going to add some spices and some, some flavor. So I've got a vegetarian who's in sauce, poison sauce, that's going to give us a little bit of color. A 
Okay. It's almost like putting ketchup. <laughs> right. I got a little fish sauce. Fish sauce gives us that umami flavor. A little brininess on the back end. Just a teaspoon. <laughs> I hear you, Brian. <laughs> then we have some Thai chili sauce. That's going to give us a little sweet to it. I'm going to add some onion powder. Some garlic powder. Onion powder. 99 cent store. Nothing major. About a tablespoon. That look more than a tablespoon. <laughs> okay, maybe about a two tablespoons. All right, right, right. That was right. a teaspoon. Okay. All right. Then I'm going to give you some. We always saw this spice called five spice powder. It's what they use in a lot of Asian profile. Cinnamons, star anise is in it. Gives a nice flavor. Right. Yeah, Courtney, this is something different. That's what we're trying to do here on Urban Health Outreach Media with the kidney cookery. Uh, so, so please right now, keep coming back. Right now, the smell of this is amazing. You Man, can smell the cinnamon. You can smell the star anise. Mm, don't you can smell me. the ginger. You can smell the garlic. Man, don't tease me here. <laughs> Damn, that looks good, so, bro. So, going back in, I'm going to hit it with a little sesame seed. Turn it down low. Let it steam a little bit. I'm going to add a little pepper to this. Some red pepper flakes. Oh, we're going to need the recipe for that when you get a chance. Uh, send it to me, and I can have it put on uh, PDF or uh, a thumbnail. You got some Teaspoon people want to try to make pepper it. pepper flakes, just for a little bit of heat. You know it's coming in the cookbook. And that's where we at today. Now, I haven't even tasted this yet. It's probably going to need a little bit more soy sauce. So, if we were going to add the meat to it, right before I started seasoning it down, I would, have I would have placed the meat inside of it, tossed it, and then started adding the spices all together. And, so and, and man, that, that wasn't long. No, cooks it very fast. That was, that was under 30. Actually, that was under 25 minutes. If you take... I don't play with you, Steve. I don't play with you. Man, you're going to have me come down 90. I'm only 30 minutes, about 45 minutes from you. I was in Baltimore yesterday. I should have called you. Should have called. Should have called. I, so I, I now was... that they're cooking pretty well, we're going to dump some greens in it just so we can wilt them out. So these are called power greens I got out of Costco. You got some chard, some spinach, some baby kale. Just so you can get some other vitamin essentials in it. <laughs> All right, Aaron. I want I want to do Aaron tell me to pick her up. I gotta come down Southern Merlin and get you. And then we make our way back up Baltimore. <laughs> oh, I can do Southern Merlin. We were supposed to go fishing down there at Solomon's Island. Aaron, do you live near Solomon's Island? I went to go visit. I, isn't isn't that near you, Aaron? I'm not I'm sure. We was down there near the water. And I'm going to add a little bit more soy sauce to this just because the greens are going to need a little bit of flavoring on the back end. Okay. But, I mean, to each his own when it comes to adding that soy sauce. Right, Brian? Yes, yes, yes. When I first put them in, I forgot to add the greens to it. So now I'm just trying to wilt them real fast. And you can see they're starting to wilt up. Man, and that looks like something out of the uh, the restaurant, bro. <laughs> I 
Oh, Miss Gloria, Miss Gloria just gave me an idea. She said you can freeze me, uh, put some in the freezer bag. <laughs> Yes, Miss Gloria, we got. I, I, I get some from you later. Hey, Merlin, thanks for joining. This my uh, Merlin Richardson uh, co-worker. She's a great technician. Now I'm gonna tell you, that's one dialysis technician that is is really good and really caring. This lady right here, Merlin Richardson. God bless you, Merlin. Thanks for watching. Uh, so, <laughs> Lisa Baxter says we're hers. Oh, can you use teriyaki sauce? That's what uh, Miss Bridget want to know. Or where is it? Teriyaki sauce you can use, but it's not so much gluten free for a lot of people that may have a little gluten issue. Okay. So that's your finished product, Steve. Hopefully you like it. Man, that's awesome. Now, what's the actual name i want to uh type it hold on what's so the actual doing... name of this sweet potato asian noodle veggie style hey man okay uh all right Hey man, guys, I'm just typing it so I can put it up. All right. I don't want to be like uh, Dan uh, Quail and spell potato wrong. <laughs> All right, hold on. I don't know if a lot of people remember that uh, over was President Bush to spell potato. All right. Uh, sweet potato, Asian noodle, veggie style. There we go, guys. In less than 30 minutes. That's the amazing thing about it. 30 minutes, Brian. Chef Brian, you did this. I thank you. I thank you for watching. My Isha, how does it taste? Very good. Very, very good. And this is my first time tasting it. And I'm not an Asian food person, but I really like it. I can't wait to finish the rest on my plate. <laughs> oh, wow, Brian, man, that looks awesome. Now, what did you what did you just sprinkle on that? So you got some sesame seeds, which are great for protein and some other great nutrition in your body, and a little parsley just to dress it up. And I thank everybody for being with me today. If you have any other health questions, any alternative questions about food, how to bring your blood sugars down, how to control your insulin, um, even to deal with the spiciness. And that's really not spicy. I didn't put a lot of red pepper in it just because some people have gastro issues and can't tolerate a lot of spicy. But it has a great profile flavoring to it, and it's real easy to digest. Uh-huh. Hey, hey Chef Brian, just, yes. just share just a little bit about your history you know, so people don't think you're just a chef and you're not using it, you know, and, and, and you don't use this for yourself. Uh, you, you're you on dialysis as well, right? I've been on dialysis for six years. I'm just starting to get kidney transplant offers. Um, I've had a long journey in this six years. I've had 19 times my fistula has erupted and bled out. Um, I've lost two liters of blood just from me sneezing and having to be rushed to the hospital. I've had 42 surgeries. I've attempted seven suicides. So my journey in this walk in dialysis has gone the full gamut of my numbers being bad, not wanting medicine and having to learn how to bring my numbers down based upon the food. I'll give you another one real quick. This is the only water that I drink. It's called Waikiki water. It's volcanic Hawaiian water with natural electrolytes. So if you're drinking water thinking you're doing better for your body, most of the time we drink dead water. It doesn't have any life to it. So the reason we know water that comes up from the ground has an electric charge is because it's going through 
all this sedimentation to get ionic charge on the water, thus giving you minerals, sodium bicarb, which is one of the biggest issues most diabetics have, or well, most renal patients have, is not enough sodium bicarbonate being produced in the kidneys anymore just because we're losing that function. Right, right. Um, where you get that water from? Water comes from YY's Giants are the only two places in Maryland I've been able to find this water. Wow. And you can order it online as well. Oh, what's the um, pH? The pH of it, I think, should be 7 to... 9? No, you don't want 9 because that takes you too alkaline. Um, 76-8.2. Okay. Okay. Now, the wow. problem with alkalinity in water is you got to eat right for it to mean something. So if you're going to go out and eat some fast food, some food somebody else has cooked using bad products, you're already going to be below that seven point neutral. You're probably going to be acidic in that 5.0 range. Right. So I try to put a lot of healthy stuff in and even sometimes the condiments help to reduce that pH balance. So it's a give and take constantly in your body to maintain good health. Some days I cheat. Some days I get back on board and I know what I'm supposed to eat. Most of right. the time I do a lot of vegetarian dishes, especially January. Hey, do they sell that wood in the case or it comes in the, uh, the bottle like you have it? It comes in a bottle, but Giants is 32 ounces, two for five. Sometimes they do the small bottles, which are... 16 ounces, which are 10 for $10. Okay. And this is the size that you get when you order a case online. Oh, online from where? Um, Amazon? Um, from Waikiki itself. It's cheap. Oh, okay. Okay. So, but because it's shipping, you end up spending about $42. But it's the best water you can put in your body. Yeah, I want to get you to send me that, text me that name, man, so I can uh, get on board with it. I agree. Wow, man, this this has been amazing. And I didn't know it was, I mean, going to take this short of a time, but that's the cook that, but that's great, especially when you have warriors who may be going to dialysis, going to work, and they may be too tired or just uh, want something easy to cook. And that looks like uh, that took under 30 minutes to cook, Brian. Yes, and had we added some meat, it would have been the same amount of time. So only thing I would have done is either pull the meat off the bone from a chicken, or I would have already prepped the meat, put it in a toaster oven, cooked it halfway done, put it in, let it steam the rest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Miss Gloria said God's telling you He's not done with you, Chef. And yes, I know, Miss Gloria. Thank you so much. Yeah, God has proven it to you. God has indeed blessed you. I'm glad you took heed to His call for you on your life in Jesus' name. Wow. Amen. Yeah, man, you multi talented, bro. You you uh, sell um, life insurance. Uh, coach, I mean, tell us some of the th other things you do, uh, Brian, other than uh, cooking. All right, so I became an insurance provider writing life insurance, um, predominantly because I couldn't find a life insurance company to cover me on dialysis, so I went out and found one. And there's a product 2020 that just came out to cover dialysis patients upon death, it'll go up to $30,000. and it's a way to just give your family some protection in case something should happen. And you want to leave something for your family. It's not a lot of money, but it will help your burial expenses. And it's not really expensive, especially if you get it earlier in age. Right. On top of that, I'm a wellness coach. 
So I take clients that don't know how to control blood sugar, high blood pressure, cancer patients, gout patients, um, pericardia patients, congestive heart failure patients, and I reverse all of those different modalities. How? Because I had all of those problems initially, minus the cancer. So I'm able to show you how to take those numbers and flip them back so we can reverse them and you not have to stick your needle, stick a finger with needles or even do any insulin shots anymore. Um, we can reverse for COVID so that we can reverse those illness symptoms that are associated with COVID. On top of that, we've been able to show folks how to do weight loss better and cleaner. So my January is our fast season. And in that time, I, I, I try to show people, give me 45 days with your body, follow through, and I can give you a brand new body with enough energy to be that old individual you used to be, regardless of dialysis. Oh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Bridget, she said, how do I get in touch with him on life insurance? Okay, so if you go to TV7, Tom Boy number seven, wellness coach. Wait a minute, I got that here, Brian. Uh, okay. uh, it's not the ministry, is it? Well, yeah. if you can do TV7 wellness outreach ministry at Gmail. You can send me an email or you can reach me on Facebook. Here we go. TB7 Wellness Coach. Or T or TB7 Wellness Outreach Ministry at Gmail. Yes, either one is fine. All right, somebody sent me a message. Okay. Uh oh. We lost Chef. We get him back. Hold tight. Uh, all right. If you want to reach out, TB7 Wellness Coach, but that's all one word. Uh, we lost Chef uh, unexpectedly. Let me see if he gets back on. He could have lost the power to the phone that he was using. But, yes, you can reach him at TB7 Wellness Coach. We got him back. Technical difficulties, but we All right, that's okay. Um, so we got a lot of testimonies on the Facebook side from clients that we've reversed weight, clients that we've taken from a 12.6 A1C that are now in that six range. So we've done something traditional medicine doesn't do with no side effects. Damn, 12.7. That's 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 a lot. That's a lot. So I came yeah, in dialysis type two, at yeah. 12.4. Initially was my A1C. My A1C now is 5.1. Wow. Just by learning how to eat certain things and learning the timing that you eat certain things. Okay, right. Some people may eat late at night, and then overnight that can increase the uh, blood sugar, couldn't it? Correct. So we don't eat that late. Even now, because this is sweet potato starch, it's not giving your body a lot of process that it has to work hard in that pancreas, which makes that insulin go up in your body. So this is a clean dietary food that you can eat 8 o'clock at night. I wouldn't eat a lot, so I didn't give her a lot to eat, smaller portions. And if she was still hungry, we'd have some Killer Dave bread after that. Killer Dave bread is one of the best breads that I give all my clients so that we can put fiber in the body that brings down sugar and blood pressure. Killer Dave bread. Yes, if you give me a minute, I'll show it to you. Sure, I never heard of that. <laughs> yeah, take that to the to the stove. Wow, look at that. <laughs> wow, get a little closer. Oh Jesus! Yes, I mean you can look at the texture off of that. My God, 
Brian, you did a, a marvelous job. Thank you, thank you. So this is my bread that she's going to back up and show you. And the bread has 21 different grains, a lot of seeds. What's great about Killer Day bread is it doesn't contain soybean oil. Soybean oil is a poison in our bodies that breaks down our arterial, that breaks down this heart, which adds weight, which throws your thyroid off, which messes your endocrine, which poison your kidney. Wow. Now, where you get that from? Uh, um, what's that? What's Killer Dave's bread is at somewhere Costco like that. Um, the BJ's the cheapest. Uh -huh. So we get two loaves for seven ninety nine, And they have five different other bread types. They've got bagels, English muffins, and they just came out with hamburger buns, which are the best. And I use this bread to make some of the best grilled cheese. Now, can you get that from, um, what's that store? Um, it's like a market for vegetarian. Whole Foods? No, it's a small one. I, I, uh, Trader Joe's. No, Trader Joe's only sells Trader Joe's proprietary. Okay. I don't shop at Trader Joe's. Okay. Overpriced. So this killer, this killer day bread is, I mean, you only can find it at certain stores? Um, all your big store, club stores, Walmart normally carries it. Giant, Safeways, all of those carry the bread as well. I'm not okay. familiar with anybody outside of Merle. Got you. Got you. Wow, man. This, this has been awesome, uh, Chef Brian. Appreciate so as you can see, my assistant has been putting a hurting while she's taking pictures of our food that I have yet to eat. But it looks yeah, like I need to get you... my own plate. Yeah, man. And she making me hungry. Wow. Yeah. Man, she this has been it, awesome. This has been I'm just awesome. Glad we made enough of it. <laughs> right. Right? All right, man. Well, I ain't going to hold you. I mean, before I let you go, this has been amazing. Uh, short meal preparation, kidney friendly. Uh, what you want to leave with uh, the people watching pertaining to uh, eating clean, trying to eat clean in a post-COVID, uh, well, it's not post, but in the COVID world. Well, right now, so many food pantries are giving out a lot of produce. Um, with that being said, stay away from broccoli and cauliflower. They disrupt your endocrine, your thyroid, and your kidney. They disrupt your hormones, especially in African-American women. Stay away from broccoli and cauliflower. But the rest of the vegetables are great. Try some different ways to prepare them. If you don't know, you can always hit me and I can send a recipe to you. But one of the easiest ways is to add a little sesame seed oil and just roast them in the oven, 375, 15 to 20 minutes. It's nothing like roasted vegetables from broccoli. I mean, I'm from Brussels sprouts to carrots to zucchinis to eggplant. Any of those vegetables taste amazing roasted out. You can do this Reno diet so much flavor and so clean that you'll see your numbers change overnight. So you're not in the dark. I'm here if you need some light. I can show you how to do this process. Pick up a phone. We're accepting clients right now at TV7 Wellness Coach if you're just tired of where you are and you want some change. Man. And if you need some insurance for life, give me a call as well and we can write up a quote and go from there. Right, and that's... They can reach you at TB7 Wellness Outreach Ministry. Yes. I mean, I see you all the time on Facebook doing um, some type of education. Yes, yes. So we also run a nonprofit for youth in Baltimore City. Um, 
I take kids out fishing and then show them how to cook the fish. One more, one less. Be more humble is a slogan from my partner's business. Mm -hmm. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. You said you take at-risk youth out fishing and show them how to clean it and cook it? Yes. Man, that's amazing. And not that you don't have enough on your plate doing your treatments at home, your catering business, life insurance, nonprofit, and you take at-risk youth out to fish and then teach them once you catch the fish, you go back, clean it, and cook it all in the same day. Yes. Wow, amazing, Brian. That's amazing, man. And thank you for your service, man. No problem, man. Whatever it takes, man, to help somebody. That's what we have. Right, right. I mean, when do you have time for yourself? I go fishing. <laughs> right. Okay. All right, I hear you. Again. Wow, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Smiley face. Oh, oh, let me see that again. <laughs> it's a smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You got you got people making smiley faces after they eat your food, huh, minister? Yeah, something like that, man. I, I only deal with foodies, right? Foodies. <laughs> that's the only people that come to my house are food. People they know they're gonna get a meal that's unbelievable. Right, yeah. I was just reading some of these comments. And I'll go on later today or tomorrow morning and respond to any of the comments or any questions that anybody may have. So unfortunately, I can't address every question right now, but I will get to everything tomorrow. And leave okay. To and if you can send me uh, tomorrow or when you get an opportunity, the ingredients to that and how to make it, uh, I can uh, put it in a thumbnail and post it. And people can see it, you know, like we did the last uh, with Chef uh, O. Okay. And I'll leave it. Um, I'll take a picture now, just a still shot. Yes, please. And send it to me so I can put it up. Okay. Got it. I'll send it to you later. All right. All right. Don't forget, man. I'm going to be looking out for it. Got it. It's coming so, to you now, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Please, you know, I'm going to be posting it all over the place. <laughs> but but uh, I thank everybody for just entertaining, trying to learn something different. Um, we might even get to a cooking show where we do some sweets. I know a lot of diabetics are wondering, well, if you eat over this food, what do you have for a sweet? And there are some sweets that are diabetic friendly. They're a little bit more expensive that we can make but I at least want to show you what some of those are and how we do those as well. All right. Oh man, that would be awesome. That would, that would, that would definitely be awesome, man. So, all right, Brian, we're going to let you go and enjoy your meal that you humbly prepare for us. We appreciate you, man. And we see you on the next time, uh, That's on the good. kidney cookery. Anytime you need me, man, give me a call, bro. Yeah, we're going to have to, somebody put up holiday meals. So uh, I know uh, Thanksgiving coming up and Christmas, so we're going to have to do something. So we are doing a giveaway for my nonprofit. One more, one less. 160 meals are going out to feed folks that are in need during COVID. But one of the things that we're going to do different is I'll send you the link on Wednesday the 24th, 25th, I believe. We're going to show how to prep chicken correctly, spatchcock style. We're going to do whipped mashed potatoes, and we're going to do Szechuan string beans. So I'm going to show you how to make those things, and you can get on the pre-record, and you can follow along if you want to, but you can just learn how to cook food a little bit different. Now, because I'm using ingredients that are in people's home currently, some of it is not diabetic friendly, but at least you can get the concept. Got you. Got you. All right, man. This this has been an awesome show. Chef, man, thank you again. I'll be reaching out to you uh, over the weekend. I'll let you go and enjoy your meal, man. 
All right. You take care, Steve. Take care, Facebook, and everybody else. Be blessed. All right. You too. You too, Chef. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, guys, this has been an awesome show, man. So, again, share this broadcast. You're not going to get it anywhere else but Urban Health Outreach Media. Uh, I just want to thank Lisa Baxter, Miss Gloria Mongo, Kathy Mullen, uh, Kevin, Lucan. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, hey, Kevin, man, you can try to learn how to make this right. And then when you go hunting, whatever you get, maybe uh, elk meat or deer meat, you can chop it up and put a little bit in that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, Bridget, thank you for watching. Miss Gloria, Leslie, thank you. Aaron, I appreciate y'all guys. And Jonathan. Oh, and my co-worker, I used to supervise Merlin Richardson, Dallas's technician. Uh, thanks, Merlin, for watching. I appreciate you. She always supported me when I worked in dialysis. Um, and who else? And I mean, oh, Courtney, thank you for watching. Courtney Brown, homegirl. And, and you know what, y'all? This is something that's so crazy. Me and Courtney, we live in D.C., probably like maybe 15 minutes from each other. I don't know. But I know the side of town she lives on, sometimes I go over there. It only takes me about 20 minutes to get over in southeast from northeast, depending on which way I go. So I know you've been having some challenges, Courtney. But, man, when this uh, COVID calms down or something, we – we definitely got to have lunch or, or, or meet up, do something, because we've been saying that for about a year and a half. Even when I was in Baltimore, now I moved closer, we still haven't even hooked up. Uh, when I say just for lunch, something like that, I want people to get the wrong idea. Uh, oh, thank you for watching, Thelma. Appreciate you. Lisa Baxter, thanks. All right, guys. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching. Have a good Friday night. Have a great weekend. Oh, I forgot. Tomorrow, I'm telling you right now, I haven't even posted the advertisement. So, tomorrow, I'm going to Nick Gentile, who just recently g gave a portion of his liver. Now, and this is a guy who donated his kidney uh, a year and a half to two years ago. Now he's back like Will Smith is seven pounds, <laughs> donating, the, or, donating a liver, part of his liver. Now, who knows next year what Nick may um, uh, donate? <laughs> I'm telling you. So... Tomorrow, straight from the hospital bed in Rochester, New York, live interview, special broadcast with Pastor and two-time organ donor, two times, kidney, part of his liver. That guy needs to be on a pedestal right now, or pedestal. So watch tomorrow, 8 o'clock, right here, Urban Health Outreach Media. Live interview with Pastor Nick Gentile, two-time organ uh, donor. Two-time organ donor. Part of his liver and his kidney uh, a year to two years ago. So, And then we're going to come back on Sunday with the Lisa Baxter Show at 8 o'clock. And then at 9, we're going to have Susan Vandenberg on with her husband. Uh, who is this? Oh, with her husband, Eric, uh, Sunday night. And we got a special treat from Susan Vandenberg. So, guys, you can't get this nowhere else. 
It's free. Great information. Great people. I mean, what more can you ask for? So thank you guys for watching. God bless you. And as I say, on Monday, uh, I have my show on Tuesday, our international show, UK to USA, right? I'll be in Atlanta, Georgia, coming to you live from Atlanta, Hotlanta ATL. All right. See you guys tomorrow. God bless you. Have a great Friday. Love you guys to pieces. And uh, I wouldn't want it any other way. Thank you, guys. Again, God bless you. Peace. I'm out.